hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6, today turning the 65 Ford Mustang into an autocross car. Now you may expect it, well being a classic American car, not to fare particularly well when it comes to autocross. However, I think this car could maybe not quite challenge the mono, but I certainly think that this could go quite quickly around the, the autocross course. It is incredibly light for what it is, and certainly with all the race parts and so on, this is going to be a pretty damn light car. We can get some big tyres on it. They tend to handle pretty well once you put the likes of race suspension on it and so forth. Uh, I think this could, and we can also get some decent power in it, uh, keeping it in A-class. I think this could be a... Um, we could have interesting results from the Mustang, certainly. This stands a good chance of going of going pretty damn well. Uh, to the upgrade shop. Now, the choice of upgrades are completely open as long as I keep the car in A-class, except for driveline. So we're keeping the cars with their standard drivelines. Not a problem with the Mustang, as it's, I would keep it rear-wheel drive anyway. Uh, now, tyres, of course, are going to be a big important thing. We're going to want race tyres, probably the first thing that uh, you want to be putting on a car when, uh, when doing this kind of thing, provided you have all of the PI available, and there's plenty available in this. I mean, the, the, the weight in this car, this is only about £100 heavier than the NSX when we'd finished building the NSX. This stuff is incredibly light for, for what it is. So yeah, we'll get some race tyres, we'll get some big tyre widths, uh, two five fives on the front. Uh, this is not quite as big as some of the other muscle cars on this one. However, it is a damn sight lighter and smaller. So I'm hoping that uh, it should all work together to be uh, to be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, two nine fives on the back. Sure, a lot of the muscle cars, a lot of the other, sort of the, you know, the American muscle cars will be getting three, four fives, I think, about the common size for the rear of the vehicle, but uh, this is much smaller and lighter than them, so it should all work out pretty well. Uh, aero parts, yeah, we shall be sticking these on as well. We'll give the car, <laughs> we'll give the car a, a nice beard. We'll go for, I'm guessing, yeah, it's a, se it's a, it's a sensible spoiler. I was kind of hoping for a silly, ridiculous one, but no, we've got the sensible sort of uh, rear, rear spoiler. Okay, now I've been to I've been to C class. Now the other important thing: race weight reduction. We will drop the weight down to two thousand two hundred pounds. Uh, we I was hoping we might be able to get it under two thousand. I don't think we are going to though, because we just want a roll cage as well. So that's going to jump it uh, jump it back up. Not quite as not can't quite make it as light as I would ideally like. But I mean, it's still <laughs> it's still pretty good going at the moment. We're hundred pounds lighter than the NSX. Yeah, okay, we're heavier than the MX five and the Mono, but uh, still, you know, it's it does pretty well for a Mustang. Let's face it and of course race race brakes very very much uh, important and that's kind of most of the important handling bits done oh differential that is another critical critical bit of a classic car like this otherwise it's gonna go and spin one wheel and that's not what we want at all and should we go uh, we probably do want a half decent gearbox in here so we will stick in the uh, the race transmission and the race clutch now we will leave we're down to 2100 pounds especially if we can get an exhaust in here exhaust how much are you going to shave off the uh, off the weight uh oh <laughs> i don't think we're quite gonna get under 2000 but we are going to get the car down a uh, down to a, a decent weight. Now, I'm not sure. Are we going to need some form of uh, forced induction? I think we probably will do. Let's have a look at engine options and so on. I suspect we're not going to keep it in. Okay, so we could go for the uh, 5.7 litre V8, the, en the V8 that goes in everything. We could get the 7 litre Hemi. Uh, or we can't get the NASCAR engine, that's not going to keep it in, uh, in A-Class. The thing is, I don't really want either of them engines, particularly they are heavier engines, slightly, especially the Hemi. Uh, that's quite, okay, sure, you get a lot of power and torque, but it is a, a fair amount heavier. I might just keep the standard engine and go for uh, an aspiration swap. And then the problem is, which one do, do we go for? Do we go for... Uh, the the supercharger or the twin turbo. I've been tending to stick with superchargers uh, for this uh, series, figuring that uh, a turbo lag would be a terrible, terrible thing for an autocross car. So I think I'm probably going to keep with the supercharger. Admittedly, it is slightly heavier. However, I think we, we are going to need the power, I'm pretty sure here, to uh, make sure we get it to the top of A-Class. I might just not upgrade the uh, supercharger uh, once we've got it in the car. We'll go for as much of the uh, the lightning bits in the engine as we uh, as we can. Just saving a little bit of weight here and there, wherever wherever we can. Uh, we're going to get some decent power out of, this, out of this car. And this is why I said I reckon this Mustang would be pretty quick. Because we are very light. 
and we've got far more power than we got. I mean, we're only just at the sort of the, 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 the beginning of A class, and we've got more power already than we got in the entirety of the NSX. And the NSX was far heavier than this. Uh, that's uh, slightly heavier bits on there. And I'm probably going to. Uh, let's just have a look. Wait, I'm just trying. Are we going to have to go for both big things? I think we are going to have to go for both of these if we want to get the power in the car. Ooh, okay, upgrade. That actually takes off some weight, which is lovely. 405 horsepower in our car so far. 405 is a lot of power in uh, in this thing. Shall we stick on the uh, camshaft? Well, we've only got a couple of bits left that we can put on the car. Let's stick on that uh, uh, air intake. Now, can we get on that? Ooh, <laughs> we can either sneak that on but I do want to kind of have drive line on as well. So if we sneak that in there, duh, 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 that there, it's uh, hmm. So that adds a little bit of weight, but uh, a bit of power. It doesn't actually change the PR. This is a really awkward PI that I've got this car at at the moment. So that adds a huge amount of power. Hmm. Because you see, I want to. I really want to have this on the car because that saves uh, a fair amount of weight. But now we're at an awkward PI <laughs> to try and build the vehicle to, because I mean, that, sure, this can give me can give me some, but now I don't think I can get the these to go to the right sort of uh, right sort of a thing, and that's going to put us well over. Um, have I got all of these other parts on? I think I have. As I said, I don't really want to be sticking that on there if I can help it. Right, okay, well, I'm afraid uh, <laughs> we're going to have to have a slight change of plan, as much as I would like that. We're going to go for power in, uh, in this car. Oops, didn't mean to press B. No, come back. Game, please come back. Right, there we go. Back where, <laughs> back where we should be. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have to go for this, and we will take out that. Okay, it's... Uh, It'll do. It'll do. 488 horsepower, 488 foot-pounds of torque. That's, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of power, a lot of torque in this car. Still, even with even with not being able to get these... Uh, oh, wait, I can get that one there in. Yes, I will have that. Uh, might as well, while we're here, can we sneak a driveline on? Maybe. Uh, yeah, indeed we can. Sure, I will take that. Say it's shaved off, uh, I don't know, four or five pounds with just them two that we can still fit in A-Class. I'll take it. Yeah, big power, big torque in a car that is pretty damn light. So it definitely stands a chance of going pretty quick. All right, so we are ready here at uh, Hockenheim where I am going to get three runs with this Mustang uh, to uh, try and go as fast as possible. Our current leader, the BAC Mono, has a time of two minutes seven Point seven. I think that's going to be a mighty tough time for the Mustang to beat, but I'm certainly, uh, I'm hoping we can get under the two tens with this car. If we have the traction, that's going to be a big important thing, and we have the rear end grip, then I think we stand a chance. We're certainly going to have the acceleration in between the gates. There is going to be a huge amount of that. Uh, it's if we have the uh, the handling. To, uh, to deal with the gate and can we put the power down well enough? I mean, this is by far the, uh, well, I say it's by far the talkiest car we've had. I mean, okay, it's not as talky as the Hummer or the uh, the Rolls-Royce, but this is far, far lighter. The power to weight ratio in this car is, uh, is immense. I was being cautious through there. I definitely think I can be braver. There does seem, as I was kind of hoping, there is plenty of grip. Uh, in this car, I don't think uh, we have a little bit of understeer. We don't quite have oh, the uh, careful now, Mustang. Uh, oh dear, that's gonna no, we're fine. Uh, we don't quite have the uh, the same precision as we got with the NSX. Uh, that NSX was a beautiful car to drive, and the uh, you know, it's not exactly a surprise we perhaps don't have the uh, the handling the handling of that. But we are <laughs> mighty quick. That was 115 miles an hour before jumping on the brakes in the Mustang. Now, I also suspect we will be a damn sight more oversteery around here if we're not careful. However, third gear actually was pretty good through there. Third gear worked for for the Mustang. Oops, slow it down through there. I mean, there is oh, there's a, certainly a bit more wheel spin than we've had in some of the other cars. However, 
it's still yeah we will we are going to slide through there uh, however it is very very manageable in uh, in this vehicle and again we get a little bit it wants to slide a little bit how are we under braking this is a big uh, a big concern perhaps for this car it does pretty well i mean we're not going to have the greatest brakes available on this vehicle crap i tried to take that flat and we got a little a little wobble on the way into the uh, to the narrow alleyway there i think we took out a couple of gates probably on the way through there we're not gonna yeah it doesn't quite have the same <laughs> The same change of direction that you've got in the NSX. You can't just quite um, weave through the gates as uh, as nicely, and it definitely <laughs> definitely doesn't quite have the traction out of there. Oh, I've, I've messed up that corner there completely. My bad. On a, oh, on that. Well, I mean, we hit I think mm, three, four gates uh, around this one. I think it might actually have been yeah about four gates. I think there. So uh, take off 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, I mean, under 210, I think is definitely possible. Definitely possible with the Mustang. But if we are going to get under that 210, the trick is going to be not make any mistakes. Can't afford to make any mistakes with this car. And I think this one here is going to perhaps uh, be a slight bit easier <laughs> to to have issues with, uh, you know, with just getting that little bit too much wheel spin or perhaps getting just that tiny little bit too twitchy. The front end just doesn't quite turn in as nicely as uh, as I would like. Yeah, it is blisteringly fast once we can get the power down out of the corner, as we would expect from, the, from this huge power to weight ratio that we have in the car. But uh, the, the front end doesn't quite get turned in as nicely. Still gets turned in better than some cars though. I mean, we're still taking very, very good speed through, uh, through some of these corners. Oh, <laughs> that was running a little bit wide. To be fair, I might just keep it in third. Through uh, through here, and I maybe I maybe asking a little bit too much uh, of that. I think I'll probably do one in second. Oh, the understeer, uh, and then we just get all of the wheel spin on the way out. Now, can we be flat? I'm not sure we can be flat. Uh, well, maybe, maybe we can be. You know, <laughs> that is pretty good grip through that very very fast section. It does very well through there. I wasn't expecting it to uh, to be able to take that sort of speed through there. All uh, right, let's. Back it down into second, yeah. I was there trying to keep it in a higher gear. It's just not quite in the right place, that uh, that gear for what I want it to uh, to be doing. All right, and then, oh, slow down for this really tight section. Okay, we didn't hit any gates. That's the important thing. Curb is a bad idea across there. Curb is really nasty uh, around this track. You can get in all manner of trouble running over them, uh, especially when we're trying to fit the car through tiny little narrow gates. Not a good idea to uh, to be hitting them. Right, let's try and not get uh, a big slide on as we come through the terrible tunnel. We have navigated that one there okay this time around. And don't get caught out by the understeer as we go through here. Yeah, we have to just have a dab on the brakes just to bring the car back in line for the exit of the uh, exit of that section. Uh, it does feel quite understeery through some of these uh, <laughs> through some of these really tight gates in, the, in a way that the NSX and the Mazda just didn't have problems. This one here, you know, you just gotta wait, wait, wait to get on the power, and then, then you can go. Oh, <laughs> come on, Mustang, you can do it through these final couple of gates and floor it to the line. What is the time going to be? Two ten point six. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, it's only a couple of seconds down on the NSX. Right, one more attempt. Can I find some more time? on to the final run for the Mustang and it is two seconds that we are looking for if we can uh, if we can find that we'll be challenging the uh, NSX3 if we want to challenge the leaders that might be quite difficult certainly there is some time in the car if I can deal with the understeer that's uh, that little bit better uh, I'm not sure how much though admittedly I never thought I was gonna find three seconds with the Mazda so yeah, you never know. Maybe it can challenge the uh, the top of the table. Right, neatly done through uh, through this uh, this first section. Uh, I was keeping the car in third last time around. I think in second there might be a slightly better option. I think third gear is just that little bit too long. And uh, while I liked the fact that I could boot it without the wheel spin, I think the gear was just that little bit uh, little bit too long. So we'll go with second for now and we didn't have too much wheel spin which is uh, always good that's such a horrible gate to get the car through I think the real big difference between the Mustang and the NSX the Mustang can take similar speeds really through some of these corners as as the Honda could 
problem is the Honda is so much more refined than, uh, than this Ford. It is so much easier to take said speeds with the NSX. There's so much more confidence in the car. This is not a bad car at all, do not get me wrong. This is not a bad car at all. The problem is when I've, uh, when the last car I drove around here was an NSX that was, well, pretty much perfect to my driving style, this is a little bit of a pain to, uh, to get. So when you try and jump on the throttle there, the NSX is never going to spin its wheels and through here, no problems with the Honda. The Mustang just wants to start going that little bit sideways. And I j on an autocross course, and especially with me driving the car, oh, that was bloody close. <laughs> That was bloody close indeed. Yeah, it's not quite what, uh, what you want from the car. Now, also, I had a small issue for the hairpin last time. We did a little bit better, uh, I think, dealing with that. I wanted to take a little wider line into the corner. Uh, it didn't quite work out how I had planned, but we got it through at least. Okay, and now we're coming to this final section. Try and make the most of the power that is available in the Mustang, because, of course, the acceleration in between the gates is very good. I fear we may lose some time through here because you've just got to wait, wait, wait to get on the power. Now we can go for it. Now we can run to the line. It's quick. It's not a 2080 from the Mustang. That is quick for the, uh, the GT. Yeah, we found, we found the time. It puts the Mustang into third place. That is a difficult car to drive. It is, as I said, it is a very, very quick car. Very, very quick car, this one. It can carry great corner speed. However, carrying said corner speed is, uh, yeah, very difficult. In, uh, <laughs> in the Mustang, the, the rear end grip is, is it's okay. It is just about on the limit of what I can drive comfortably. If this was any more slidey, I would not like this car at all. Uh, it, it's just just about on the limit that acceleration between the gates is lovely And I think that's what saved it ever so slightly. I mean we're only three tenths of a second down on the BAC mono in a 65 Mustang around an autocross course that you know time wise. It's impressive It's just a very very difficult car to, to drive at those at those kind of speeds I, There were places in that run that was just Millimeters away from disaster with the car especially through that tunnel of gates I, I thought I'd fluff that then, um, but uh, yeah, that was that that was a quick car, just a pain in the ass to drive. So the uh, the NSX sadly gets dropped out of the podium spots. The Mustang goes into the third place, two tenths of a second down on the MX-5, three tenths down on the BAC Mono. Yeah, a, a, an impressively quick car. I thought it might be fast. It certainly challenged the top. Not quite as refined as the other vehicles, but uh, yeah, still a really rather impressive time from the Mustang. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.